There it is. That's the F1 error then. And actually just to listen to the bike it doesn't sound right. Uh, and what that is, is the secondary throttle valve actuator sticking. Um, I'm going to take it apart and I'll uh, show you again when I've um, uncovered that. There's the tank off then. So before I took that off, I disconnected a fuel pipe there. That's an overflow pipe from the fuel tank. And that, and that's the fuel pump power supply I believe. Um, yeah, and obviously the, the the fuel level sensor too. The fuel gauge, yeah. So, carburetor's air box. I'm going to take that off now and uh, be able to show you the STVAs after that. Um, and now, of course, we come to the, the meat of it, which is the secondary throttle valve assembly. Now, there's a bit of shite on the inside of the carb, uh, the throttle bodies there. And I suspect that that's because the front uh, inlet rubber wasn't properly seated or properly bolted onto there. It is an absolute bitch to get to. When I put it back together, I have to make sure that that isn't the case. These butterflies here, that's the secondary throttle valve assembly. Um, and basically, when you turn it on, what they should do, I hope the camera can see this, what they should do is go through a little cycle. So they open fully, close fully, and then return to a sort of a part open state, and that's the starting condition. Um, if they're stuck, and these will be, I'll prove that in a moment. I can see already that they are. Um, then the bike gives that F1 error and uh, plays up. Uh, so, when you adjust these, when you not adjust them, when you try and see if they're free or not, there's only really two ways that you can do it. The, the, in the book it says, that nut there, that, that is, that's the worm drive to this servo, uh, and it drives that. So this servo drives this butterfly, which drives this rod, which drives the second butterfly there. What you shouldn't do, ever, is get hold of uh, this end of it, this end of the, the rod, and try and crank that uh, open and closed from that end um, against the resistance from this. So if you're going to actuate them and make them all work and watch them doing their thing, either it happens when you turn the key on, or you should use that nut at the back of the servo. So it's that one there. I think it's an eight mil nut or something. This is what uh, you'll have heard referred to as the TPS, the throttle position sensor. So what that does is senses the position of the butterfly valve at the top of the carb there. Uh, and so and talks to the ECU. So the ECU knows where they both are because it knows what it's putting at that end and what it's getting back from this end. That F1 error is saying that something's not right there. Hmm. So it does move. But it's far from free. Anyway, what I'll do is switch it on and see if it does its little dance. I don't think it will. So that should, they should both move now. There you go, nothing. Nothing at all. All right, here's the patient prep for surgery then. Um, in order to get a shaft out, I've got to take these little butterfly valves out. Just need a screwdriver. Obviously, I'll put the sheet under here so that uh, if I do anything silly like drop something, <laughs> I can easily retrieve it and it isn't going to go. Yeah, and whilst I'm a lifelong Suzuki rider, I, I love them. They are. You know, everyone has their favourite uh, bike manufacturer. Suzuki is probably mine, to be honest. But this is just a shit design, isn't it? It's just a shit design because it's not just my bike, my DL650 that this has happened to. This happens to all of them in the end. Uh, and this one's only done 30,000 miles. Uh, and to be honest with you, it's let down a little bit by that term. Put those there, butterfly screw. It's let down a bit by the fact that, I mean, you've got to have them, despite what anybody says. You know, there are people who've remo removed these entirely uh, and made a little box to trick the ECU that you plug in, and uh, you know, you, the designs for that on easy. It can be done, but what you end up with is a bike that, um, well, this this is part of the S STVA system there, that it adjusts the, uh, the, the cold starting idle uh, of the bike and the warm idle as well actually uh, all, all various bits in there uh, and, and you'll never get it right you know you take this off and you'll have endless buggering about you basically to remove the stvas 
you've got to redesign so much of that uh, that system that it's possible but uh, it's just too much aggro for the average bloke when in fact the easiest thing to do is just to take them out like this service them stick them back in wait another 20,000 miles and do the bloody thing again so uh, I've taken that uh, servo off just with the three bolts which is what's left under it so that's uh, the end of the, this rod and actually that is so stuck oh, I've got to really try hard to turn that to get it to move so I can pull it out clean it and uh, replace it so there it is it's coming out there now and that should where well, you'll see when I fix it that should be just as smooth as an Android's butt my god absolutely dry the bone there's something going on there maybe it's maybe it's the constant draw of air through there the constant vacuum that dries that out or something because that was uh, properly lubricated up and now well a year ago 20,000 miles away properly lubricated up and now it's absolutely well there's dust in it it's <laughs> it's that badly uh, corroded Okay, so there's the hole just cleaned, and I just noticed that in that recess there was this little uh, rubber gasket thing. Um, so, because there's a little rubber gasket in there, and um, mineral-based oils make those swell up and seize whatever they're gripping, so you shouldn't use, obviously, normal grease on brake parts, because they've got rubber gaskets, um, or anything else with rubber in it, really, because it just perishes the rubber. Uh, this is the shaft here, which I've just cleaned up now. Lubricate it all up with your friend and mine, red rubber grease. Now you can get this on eBay. Uh, it's not expensive. That pot of red rubber grease will probably last me the rest of my life. It's, uh, I'll be able to give it away to friends and still have more than I could ever use. So, uh, that's what I'm going to use to do this now, because they've got a rubber seal on the outside of them, and I don't want that seal to expand and then trap the, uh, the pin in there. It's lovely stuff to use compared to normal grease. Look at that, lovely. That's like putting strawberry jam on your bike. It's lovely. Just a little bit. And I guess because of the nature of it, there just isn't a lot of room to get much grease in there to lube it all up. But I don't know if you can really see anything at all there, or whether it'll focus that close, but anyway. We'll just use a Q-tip there to schmarm some of that grease in there and we'll just grease the little uh, pivot as well. came out so now with just one finger look mm, nice and I'm betting that that alone will have fixed it because this end is not seized but I'm gonna do this end anyway because uh, it would be a great mistake to have it apart like this and not do that <laughs> okay so carbs are on and they're plugged in uh, obviously the fuel tank None of the other stuff is wired up, so there's likely to be one or two other errors that come up, but as long as I see those STVAs do their thing, I'll be happy. We'll see. Obviously in a minute I'll start it, but first, when that comes on, they should all do the little dance. Oh, <laughs> that's how we roll. Just like that. As often happens then with motorcycle maintenance, the darkness has fallen. It's only really a couple of hours, but it's winter, so... Moment of truth then. That sounds very normal. Much more responsive on the throttle now than it was. No STVA lights. No F1 error. That's just beautiful, isn't it? 